Hello, so today we're gonna be going over a game. I gotta get this one out fast. Expedia.ca. This is gonna be a double trouble built diff game. So uh, it's primarily a built diff game. Now the reason I want to get this out as soon as possible is that if you saw my other video today, which I suggest you check out, make sure to like and subscribe if you like my content. Um, on the other video, <laughs> this is something you won't be able to do anymore come the patch on Wednesday. They're making Built Diff and Double Trouble exclusive um, as separate traits now. So, like, not like, sorry, they, they were already separate augments. What I mean is, like, they cannot be offered at the same time. Like, if you get one, you won't get offered the other one. They're exclusive to each other, which sometimes happens with certain augments in TFT. Um, it's just the way things kind of work out. Um, and it's because it's really broken. It's a really broken combination. I was waiting to upload this video. I know it's like a giga game and it's super fun. I was waiting to upload it on like, you know, a middle of the day, middle of the week type of situation to make it like more exciting. Because I recently posted a really exciting video which revolved around playing Nasus. And this video is an exciting video and guess what? It's going to revolve around playing Nasus. So I thought like, you know, especially for like YouTube, I want to like do more variety in terms of the comps I'm playing. But oh well. Uh, I want to get out as soon as possible now because it's uh, this isn't gonna be something that exists anymore in the set So um, try it while you can Right if you get this combination you can try it out, uh, but basically built diff um, Built diff is something that's really fun. It appears a lot of times in a lot of different sets uh, Built diff just means that you see here um, on the side of the screen. Give me one second on the side of the screen You'll probably notice that there's these uh, these traits that appear uh, and basically when you have them active different things happen right like um, depending on which units you have you'll you'll highlight these traits and then it'll give your whole team buffs or those units particular buffs uh, built diff is uh, the counter into the counter to uh, playing traditional TFT of like building boards with synergies what you want to do is you want to specifically play no traits active if you have no traits active you gain health and attack speed now attack speed is good on every unit right um, typically Attack speed is one of those things in TFT over the course of many many sets attack speed is always considered to be one of the best things that you can buff on a unit just because um, Everybody can use attack speed really well frontline units. Maybe not as much, but they're frontline units um, Melee melee fighters use attack speed really well helps them to keep up their omni fam uh, backline AD carry love attack speed lets them auto attack as much as possible uh, backline AP casters attack speed every time you uh, Attack every time you auto attack you gain five mana So it helps them generate mana in order to do their casting so almost every unit in the game loves to have attack speed and Usually with built diff the main idea that you're trying to play around is play as many four costs as possible So we'll actually pull up the stats uh, for once in a while and built diff itself works really well. It's, it's just a very good augment right now There's certain metas where it becomes very strong um, a lot of times. It's if there's really strong uh, four costs and five costs now um, Obviously everything's gate kept by Syndra Syndra is just so annoying in the current patch It's gonna get nerfed. Don't worry You won't have to sit through it for that much longer if you look at built diffs average It's above 4.5 which means that it's pretty good usually if something's above 4.5 It means that it's a good idea and if we look at all the units that you can play built diff with um, Usually like of course Syndra is gonna appear everywhere. That's just Syndra, but a lot of it is five costs um, in certain situations, I'll talk about them in specifics a little bit later, but a lot of times you're just trying to play around certain four costs. Um, in this case, it's showing that you play a lot of five costs with those four costs, as well as Nasus. Um, because built diff, it gives attack speed, and what else does it give? HP. And who loves HP? Nasus. Why? His attack scales off HP. So, Nasus works out really well. Um, a lot of the times the units that are bad with built diff are ones that share traits with units that you would typically want to play on your board uh, Regardless of built diff. So for example, Milio is really good because Milio, um, there's certain five costs So for example, I'll give an example um, Let's scroll down and yeah, all the five costs are really strong So they all kind of appear at the top, but somebody like Xerath for example, Xerath has Ascendant Ascendant is like a mono trait. So as soon as you put in Xerath it activates Ascension So Xerath doesn't um, benefit from built diff uh, the only reason the stats are really good on some of these units because the five costs are so strong. For example, Nora and Yumi. Nora has best friends. Nora doesn't directly benefit from built diff, but having a Yumi really helps out your board because Yumi with built diff has a really good synergy. But a lot of times the five costs are really strong. Somebody like Smolder. Smolder loves attack speed, would love a bunch of extra HP, um, and is Dragon Blaster. So those are two traits. He doesn't have a unique trait that so he'll uh, get built diff uh, attached to him basically. The same thing with Emilio. 
and that's why certain units you usually don't see lot played. Rakan is it is a little bit plus delta playing built diff because you'd rather play a milio. Uh, if you're in a high roll situation, Rakan does scale off HP and is really good, that's why he's at a plus 0.02, but typically if you have the opportunity to play a fairy unit without having the synergy in, you would choose to play Milio because Milio is a uh, fairy scholar. If you're trying to build your team, um, what I always suggest is just play around 4 costs, right? So if we put in all the 4 costs, uh, a really easy way to make a built diff board, sorry, let me just start over because I misclicked a little bit. So a lot of uh, usually what you try and do at build diff is you try and get to level eight, and you try and just play as many four costs as possible without any of them synergizing. Nasus is really good, as you can see we have Farian, Pyro, and Warrior. And so who do we drop? We drop Varus. We drop Gwen probably because Gwen's a little bit worse than Fiora, and you can drop a Fairy unit which is Callista. So usually you'll play some board revolving around these units. A lot of times you'll just pick a lot of frontline units and backline units, right? So. Um, just in terms of who's strong, Nami, Nami and Karma are very strong as backline units, and Olaf's a little bit weaker. So your board will look something like this. Uh, maybe we'll put back in an Olaf, right? Um, the thing that's really busted though with Built Diff is that, especially when you have a really strong unit, you can play duplicates of these units. Um, the other thing that's really strong is because you're rolling for so many 4 costs, a lot of times you can stay level 8 and then roll for a 3 star 4 cost. You can very easily find a 3 star 4 cost because you're thinning out the pool so much. So there's a lot of win conditions with built diff, but overall it's a very consistent um, augment, so it's very fun to play. Now, obviously, if you can make it to like a level 9 or hit some of these higher end units, you'll probably have more success playing some of the units that have uh, no synergy. So for example, Smolder um, and Milio, as well as Diana and Camille, right? Uh, let's just lose some of these uh, extra traits, right? A lot of times playing around the five costs because the five costs are just stronger in, in general are stronger versions of units. Having uh, them in and taking, um, taking this built diff effect of the attack speed and HP are usually a little bit better. So a lot of times you'll see yourself playing around uh, these particular five costs and then trying not to play four costs that synergize with those five costs now the exact built diff board I wouldn't worry too much about it especially since things are going to be changing come Wednesday so the board is obviously going to change right now I think the best board is something along the lines of Nasus, Tom Kench uh, I like Fiora personally but she's not that great and then um, what's it called you play uh, Nami and uh, Karma in the back line. You try and build a board revolving around these units. Typically, like a Tarek randomly isn't that bad. And then, if you can, find five costs and put those five costs in. Now, what you'll see in this board that I'll do a little bit differently is that I'll hit double trouble, which means that I'll just be playing duplicates of the same unit. Playing duplicates of the same unit doesn't activate the traits on the side, so it's actually a really, really good trick that you can do, especially if you're on your rolldown and don't hit many copies of other units. Like playing double Nasus is going to be way stronger than playing some random shit because Nasus scales off his HP. So a lot of times you can play similar to this. Uh, or a similar board to this and then obviously because Milio gives so many itemizations you want to have a Milio into your late game if you can find a Milio. Uh, but something like this is like an idea behind uh, playing built diff with um, too tanky. Right? I keep saying two's company is too, tank too tanky if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, that's fun. Uh, let's go back to the game and we'll talk about the game. So, in the start of the game, I'm basically building towards some sort of melee unit. I'm kind of thinking to myself, I'll probably play either Gwen or Fiora, plus a bunch of frontline units. Now, obviously, uh, when you look at the stats, the very, very high roll of built diff is that you hit a lot of the 5 costs. It even shows some of the 5 costs that don't apply built diff. It says Morgana's really good, for example. It says Zareth's really good. A lot of times you're in such a high roll position with built diff. Uh, that sometimes you can play units that don't take effect of built diff. For example, you can play Morgana and play Preservers uh, just to make sure that all your built diff units that are going giga, t giga insane on the board uh, get a bunch of healing. That's like an option, right? So there's a lot of flexibility with built diff, especially when 5 costs are very strong. For me, I'm just playing this in a traditional way that I'm just going to roll on level 8 for as many 4 costs as I can. Maybe I hit a 3 star 4 cost as a win con, and if I don't, I'll just play around this. So here, I start with uh, 
Bloodthirster. I know Sterix is really good. Sterix is really good for Fiora as an item. So I'm thinking I might just play around Fiora, for example. And here I just have a Syndra in. It's always nice to have a Syndra in just because Syndra scales into late game. Uh, obviously, this is tech that might not be relevant in come a couple of days. But it's nice to just have a Syndra in, have her scale. When she scales, even if she's not doing insane damage, she will apply Shred to multiple units, which helps your board out a lot. Uh, Built Diff in general is really strong. I'm playing double Nylas here, right? The reason I'm playing two Nylas is just because that's what I have. And like I said, they both don't um, get affected by the trait tracker, so I'm kind of down for it. Uh, Nyla is also a very strong unit. I wouldn't be surprised if you can just play Nyla um, with the, like certain lines. I think when the warrior buffs that are incoming on Wednesday, I think Nyla is going to uh, pop up a lot more, so to speak, because I already think she's really strong. Uh, and here we hit two tanky. So I actually try and check the stats on this because I wasn't sure exactly if it was good. At the time that I did it, the stats weren't available. And I think now the stats are available and it says that it's broken, which is so funny because I just kind of tried to Scooby-Doo it myself. Now the reason, like I said, the synergy works so well is because this gives a bunch of health. Now, when you three star, you gain a two star copy. Typically you want to play two tanky. Uh, with like lower cost reroll comps where like, for example, two tanky is really good with honey. Like the Honey Mancy, if you don't know. Uh, because with the Honey Mancy, you're just playing the five Honey Mancy units and then you reroll, and then having duplicate versions of those units is pretty good with two tanky because um, uh, they scale off of how much damage they take. Their damage with Honey Mancy, it's like 8% of the damage that they take or something like that. So having, and then you're usually rerolling for all three of them anyway, so you just reroll for like Kogma and all of those units, the extra synergy doesn't matter, and you can play like Honey Mancy with two tanky. That's like a viable option. Here, uh, I just take it because it's like, well, I have two Nylas anyways. Uh, here, I don't build the Nyla because I wanted to take advantage of two tanky right now. Um, but my goal is when I hit the level, when I hit level eight, I'm trying to make it to level eight, roll on level eight, and just play a bunch of four costs. That's kind of the way this comp usually works. You just like four cost vomit. You play as many four costs as possible. So here, I'm trying to pick what are the um, four units that I want the most in my two tanky four cost board. So basically, I'm just going to play four separate units. One of them is definitely going to be Nasus. Now, that's something I actually talked about. I would like to um to point that out for a second. When I was originally talking about Built Diff, I think it was during this game as well as a stream after, I was talking about how I didn't like, like I looked at like TFT Academy and I said some things on stream. Not anything bad. I just said like I really don't like how TFT Academy isn't really updating that well because I felt like built diff you need to play Nasus because of how he scales with HP and I was like I don't understand why like that's some weird board where it was like play double milio double Tarek and I was like that's definitely not the best built diff board they did update their website they put Nasus on there and they talked like you know so they fixed their board so I just want to say that uh the resource that I was complaining about for those that were watching during the stream or watching my analysis stream when I was looking at stats a couple days later um, just know that they did change it. They did update that and everything is great and I agree with what they have on the board now. Uh, it's similar to what I was talking about here and that's great. Uh, thumbs up all around. Uh, good job whoever uh, fixed up the website. We love that. Uh, but I just want to make sure I just want to make it like I, I want to say that because I want um, I don't want people to um, you know, especially when I'm talking about something, I don't want it to be like, you know, I wasn't shitting on anybody in, in particular. I wasn't like, what's it called? Shit talking. I was mostly just like explaining like, hey, I think this is wrong. I think this is wrong. It's untrustworthy. They fixed it. It's under, it's more trustworthy now, in my opinion. That's what I mean to say. Uh, but anyways, I'm just playing duplicate units. Uh, obviously, also, I, I, I don't mean that in an ego way. I just meant it. Like, I, don't, I don't know how to describe it because I don't want to insult because they're obviously better players than me. that are updating that website and that's probably a better resource than my YouTube channel ever will be. But I'm just saying that like that's something that I pointed out and they fixed it. I just want to say that they fixed it so that, you know, I clear the air. Uh, anyways. Uh, here I'm probably just building QSS. Yeah, just, I'm just trying to build as many Fiora items as possible. It's uh, item payout, so I want to slam items early just to make sure that I have really strong econ. And then when we when we make it to level 8, uh, we want to make sure that... Um, I'm basically playing around these units, right? Uh, Karma heals the frontline units. Uh, I want to play a Fiora because I'm kind of building Fiora items. Obviously, if it's a Gwen, I'll be sad and I can maybe play Gwen. But I already have one Fiora, so I just want to play double Fiora. I want to play double Fiora, double Nasus, double... Um, Tarek, and then if I can push levels after that, I can play Milio to itemize everybody else. 
So the double karma is because karma heals units when karma this is something that's also changing in the upcoming patch. She'll heal, I think, six to eight percent max health. I forget what exactly what it was. I think it was like six to eight percent max health. So when you play a karma, um, she will heal, so she's really good with like frontline units that do damage. So because I'm relying on Nasus and Fiora to do a brunt of my damage in this case. Um, I want that to work out. And melee units, melee units love HP because if a melee unit survives a little bit longer, it helps them do their Omni Vamp and their damage and go infinite. So everything about this board seems like it's going to work out. This is specifically because of two tanky with the built diff. If I wasn't playing too tanky with built diff, I'd probably roll on eight and then try and get to some of those five costs that seem to be really strong. Like finding a, a single milio is, is huge for a lot of these boards. Uh, but yeah, we're pretty strong until much later. I have triple item on Nyla. Uh, one thing with two tanky, regardless of your board, you want to position it a little bit better than how I'm positioning. So as you can see, my Nyla is on the wrong side in this fight. When a unit dies in two tanky, the other unit gains a health shield. That's why this Nyla had a health shield. So because I positioned my good Nyla here, my good Nyla died first and my bad Nyla got the health shield. You always want to position in the opposite way. You kind of want your shittier version of your unit, so the one without the items, to die first. That way it passes on the health shield to the good unit. That's something that's a teachable moment. That fight was 100% winnable and I kind of threw the fight because I put these in the wrong order. If I knew that who I was playing and I properly scouted, I should have swapped this Nyla with this Nyla. This Nyla would have lived longer, she would have gained the health shield, and she would have had a good chance of killing off the back line, as opposed to just taking aggro first and dying instantly. Just to say, big mistake there, shouldn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but in a lot closer of a lobby, it would matter a lot. Uh, I found a Milio. Oh, that's crazy. Do I not play Milio? Oh my god, I have a Milio? Milio is so good. Oh god. I have to play Milio, right? I should be playing Milio right now. Oh, this is gonna be embarrassing if I don't play Milio. I might I might sell Milio because I hit so many Rakans. I think that's what happens this game. That's like a huge mistake. Uh I'm waiting to level next turn because I want to uh I want to roll as much gold as possible on level eight. To make sure that I hit everything that I have to. Here we're playing Syndra. This is learning to spell Syndra, by the way. So this is going to be a very, very difficult board to beat later. Uh, but hopefully we can get through this. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, yeah, Nyla's going to be broken until uh, until she's not. I think I, I might actually lose this fight with against the Syndra, because Syndra's so strong. Because I think I'll probably get stunned and then Syndra will cast. Ah, no, no. It looks like I'm winning. Nice, we take those. Uh, and then what's my last augment here? Support golem is really good. Long distance pals not item collector is also good. It's probably just item collector. I think it's item collector or support golem. Nah, I just take item collector. Item collector is also getting nerfed by the way, so this is just like a giga like you won't be able to recreate this start of the next patch. Uh, I have to lose Syndra now. I found a Karma. I'd rather just play Karma for the reasons I said. We put in two Karmas for the two tanky. And we're going to roll really deep here. So here I found two Rakans. I think this is why I don't play Milio. Because because of my two tanky build, I don't I don't want to play the uh, the Milio until I find it. Yeah. And then I play... Yeah, so I play double Fiora, double Tom Kenj, double Rakan. And I don't have to roll to upgrade any of them because I have two tanky. So it makes sense that I can just leave them as is, basically. Um, because they'll get the two tanky extra value. You're basically getting a bunch of HP as well as the health shield when one of the others die. So I should be decently strong now. I sell the Milio. It's just a really unfortunate situation. Uh, it's because this is my strongest board for the next little while. Right? It doesn't make sense for me not to play the double Rakan when I already have two Rakans. Rakan also scales off HP. His shielding, I believe, scales off his HP. So getting a bunch of uh, HP from both uh, built diff as well as uh, two tanky, it makes it so that my Rakan has a good amount of um, stats on him. Right? I find a smolder here. Um, I'm upgrading these units because, you know, upgraded units are upgraded units. I'm kind of down. Uh, and it also clears up my board to fit in some of the other units. I'm rolling for another Fiora because I basically have a Fiora too. So now I kind of deleted most of my two tanky value, but I'm going to roll for at least one copy of something else and then get value of it next turn. 
Uh, here I don't really have anything to play. I can't play uh, either of these that I can afford because of the uh, the fact that uh, they have synergies that will then lose me my built diff on those units. Built diff is so strong that basically I'm playing minus a gold augment, but uh, the two augments that have built diff as well as item collector are both insanely strong for what I'm doing. So I don't feel too scared about, um, like, you know, it's, it's never a case. You should never not upgrade the units. It's mostly that, like, now my board isn't making use of my gold augment, and I have to, like, figure out, I have to roll to make use of the gold augment. That's essentially it. Uh, here I can I can play double smolder. Uh, there's also a milio that I can fit in eventually, but now I have Rakan too. Uh, I'm kind of down to just get this extra copy of Rakan so that I have two tanky Rakan as my front line. Right, a second copy of Rakan won't hurt anybody, it'll be very strong, I'm down. Right? Um, if we don't get Rakan, then we're just looking for items for Karma or frontline items. Uh, let's see what we get. We just take a belt. Belt is fine. I can make Sunfire, um, so I'll just put Sunfire on Tom Kench. And now we're just gonna keep rolling until we find one extra copy of one of these units. See, so boom, we have Karma, we take Karma, we find Tarek, we take Tarek. Now, we're just going to swap out some of these units to get the two tanky value on um, the r other units, right? That's, this is basically the way that you play. You basically just find pairs of units and you just play them. Here, it's like, I don't know if it's better to play, uh, like, you know, obviously I want to build my board around Nasus, but I didn't hit Nasus, so instead I'm just playing the Smolder uh, because I think he's a great user of the built diff trait. Obviously, all my items are on Fiora. I really, really, really want to find one more copy of Fiora. So I'm going to be rolling every turn on level 8. Um, it, it doesn't make sense for me to Econ up. I am pretty strong. But I'm worried that if I don't find a copy of Fiora anytime soon, then I'll be really unstable come a couple fights from now. Because I'm basically playing down a gold augment. So it makes sense for me to roll a little bit aggressively. Uh, but, you know... Eas easily a greedy strategy is also to just sit and build econ because I have a bunch of upgrades and I have a bunch of HP so I should be fine. Now I have the Fiora, I should probably stop rolling after this Fiora. Uh, I just have to put her in. Uh, it's probably lose the Smolder at this point just because like the extra tankiness on the uh, on the Karma is probably worth it. Yeah, but here we go. We have enough value on the board, right? We have a Rakan 2. Rakan 2 is Rakan 2 no matter what. Tom Kench 2 is Tom Kench 2. They still take value of um, built diff. I don't have too healthy, too tanky value on the entire board. But I have it on my main unit, which is Fiora. Fiora is my main damage. Fiora is my main um, casting. She does everything, right? And then these other units, uh, the Karma helps with healing the whole board. So it's really nice to have the Karma as a backline unit in this particular particular comp and as you can see uh this guy i don't know if he's seven multi-striker or what but he's a lot of multi-striker for sure and it's not it's like easy peasy right look my fiora is just going around to everybody Ooh, did i say easy peasy i'm gonna lose here that'd be so funny if i lost right now Ah, uh, karma got me let's go uh i don't want to sell nasa so i just sell um i just sell the other guy i'm gonna be rolling on level eight for a while probably the reason I'm rolling on level 8 is because what I can also do, remember I was saying you can go for a 3 star 4 cost? That's like a very viable strategy. There's no real reason for me to go 9 with the 2 tanky setup. If I was playing just built diff and not built diff 2 tanky, um, because of how strong a lot of the 5 costs are, it makes sense to sometimes go 9. But I would recommend, especially in this meta when you have to have econ for charms in addition to buying all the units, I would suggest to make sure that you are in a spot to go 9 before you go 9. Here it makes a lot of sense for me to roll on 8 because I can use this gold to make another Fiora 2. I can make another Tom Kench 2. I can make another Karma 2. There's so many 4 costs that I can upgrade because I'm playing around this 2 tanky more so uh, in combination with the built diff. Ra uh, more so than like leveling to 9 and playing like a smolder, right? I'm not really going to find two, like, you know, finding a single smolder was great, but finding another smolder is going to be hard, and then finding smolder upgrade plus another smolder, like, I have to find, like, four smolders, there's some games you roll your entire gold on level 9, you don't find four copies of a five cost, right? Uh, it's a lot easier to find the copies of the four cost, so I'm just playing around the four cost units, so it makes sense for me to just stay on eight, there's not much of an increase in odds that I have to go nine. Uh, and yeah, Fiora's going nuts. As you see, Fiora's getting her health shield because my other Fiora died somewhere else. And we're kind of steamrolling. We're doing really well against most of the lobby. Very strong combination. 
Um, melee unit loves to have a bunch of HP, like I said before. And we're not even at our max cap yet, right? We're playing around Rakan, uh, which is great. We have this double Taric, which isn't really doing that much. So I swap out one Taric for my upgraded Rakan unit. And eventually, I want to play Nasus, right? If I could, I would, but I can't, so I won't. Uh, I want to play Nasus really badly. There's some people that already have Nasus. This guy has an upgraded Nasus, for example. Uh, but Nasus makes great use of everything here. Uh, if I get an, uh, an upgraded Nasus, I'm down to sell Tom Kench and move items to Nasus. That's like my game plan for most of this game. Um, it's just I didn't hit, so I'm making the best board that I can. Uh, QSS makes it so my Fiora doesn't get stunned. And I'm just going like pure damage with this Fiora. And she's kind of going nuts, which is great for me. Uh, I could have positioned a little bit better here. I'm not really positioning that well against like Namis and all of these other units. But as you can see, uh, Fiora is just going infinite. Uh, the stats will tell you that Fiora isn't the best hold, the, the best built different unit. Uh, obviously, that's fine. The stats are very skewed right now towards certain units and certain costs, so it's a little bit difficult. Here, I'm just saving up all my econ. Um, there's no reason for me to roll because I'm not that weak. I have the most HP in the lobby by far. The person in second place at 34 HP, right? So if we think about it conceptually, there's no need for me to roll. I can decide if I go 9. I can decide if I just send it to 0 on level 8. Uh, my board is stable now. Uh, I was rolling really aggressively before because I really wanted this extra copy of Fiora. Now I even have an extra copy of Rakan. Uh, I can wait till other people die out uh, to play towards um, what I think is the strongest board, which is going to be with Nasus. So, we just chill. And of course, you know, maybe I don't spend any gold and I make it to 9 and I just play on level 9. Uh, but to me, it's not super important. Uh, underestimate is how much healing this Karma is also doing. Uh, I should have shown it in the stats, but she does heal quite a bit. I expect to lose maybe one or two fights at one point, but as of right now, the whole field, like even the Syndra player, I don't think is that much stronger than me. So I feel like I'm in a pretty commanding lead at this point. And a lot of it is because of built diff with this uh, two tanky. I basically have like triple like health traits. It's like insane. My board is so tanky. It's so hard to chew through. Uh, and I don't even have full items for everybody. I have like a couple shitty items on Tom Kench. And the rest are just one Fiora with items. Here Morello. I already have anti-heal but is a Fiora. I'm down to get anything that could be a karma item. Honestly. So like Rabadons is probably fine if I can get it. Um, it's definitely not take spat. Because, you know, that's just that's just a, that's just a reverse reverse trait, right? <laughs> At least in my spot. Uh, looking around, um, obviously the most scary, the, obviously the scariest person here is the Syndra player. Uh, I'm really strong. I'm going to roll a little bit here. I just decide, yeah, fuck it, we'll just roll. This is Diana, but then, like I said, when you're playing around 5 cost with the 2 tanky, right? If you're playing built diff, a 5 cost is really good, but playing 2 tanky with the... Uh, with the 5 cost is hard because then you have to find so many copies of a 5 cost which is very hard. So that's what I was trying to allude to before. Here I finally have my Nasus. I'm now just rolling for an extra Nasus so that I can get the 2 tanky on him. Uh, I Obviously I, I take out the wrong unit. My, my Tom can just itemize. I want to move items onto the Nasus. And, but either way, Nasus has a lot of HP. Nasus can do some good damage here. Um, I, don't, I think my positioning is pretty bad though. My uh, Fiora is getting... Like, literally, like, railed by the Syndra right off round start. Yeah, so I'm definitely losing to this guy. This guy's very strong, by the way. Vex 3, Mordekaiser 3, Syndra 3, level 7, learning to spell. Um, it's going to be hard to beat the Syndra player. Uh, hit everything, very strong, very hard front line to deal with. Uh, but what I have going for me is that I'm probably going to stay on level 8. And I'm just going to roll for these units. Uh, I'm rolling a little bit here. Just because I'm trying to secure my second... I, uh, rolling here isn't that great of an idea, by the way. You, I should definitely wait till more people die. Um, but I'm just trying to say, like, you know, if I can upgrade some units, maybe I'll be a little bit stronger. Here I want to lose Tom Kench. Uh, put in a Rakan. And just play this board now. Uh, right, Rakan scales his shield off of HP really strong. Um, what's his name? This guy, uh, Nasus, is very strong. I put triple item on Nasus now. And then my Fiora dual carry, and then I have my double Karmas that heal my whole board. I think this is the best board I could make in this built diff setup. Obviously, if these two Karmas, like, you know, if I had Milios, uh, but it's really hard to fit it in with two tanky, like I said. I'm just not, I'm very skeptical about going nine and um, 
playing a bunch of five costs and hoping that I hit like, you know, you basically have to hit like four copies or six copies of a five cost in order to cap out your board around this particular setup that I have. So it makes way more sense to just spend my gold on eight, guarantee the top four, upgrade as many units as possible, right? So now I'm guaranteed the top four. I have the most health, but I will struggle against the Syndra player, obviously, unless somebody wiped out the Syndra player for me, which I doubt is going to happen. I have triple item on this, triple item on this. I want a mana item on my Karma, and then I'll be pretty happy. That'll be pretty good for me. Uh, but this game's going to go off the rails at one point. Uh, that point's going to come eventually, so just be careful. I already have six Karmas, by the way. So, you know, even if this wasn't, like, you know, we're talking about, like, built diff and two tank. You have to understand, I only need three more karmas and then I'm in a game-winning spot. So, my spot is insane right now. Uh, here, a four cost transforming a five cost is kind of scary. I wanted a mana item. I didn't get one. I'd probably just take Giant Slayer. Uh, give some attack speed or Steadfast for one of my frontline units. Uh, it just kind of sucks. I really wanted karma items, but didn't hit, so it's okay. Uh, here, I'm just buying a bunch of four cost. Uh, this is what I was going for. I was going for upgrades. So I'm rolling for these. And now I'm just rolling a little bit deeper. Uh, I found a champ duplicator, right? That's what I was saying. You roll on eight, you find a charm. I found the champ duplicator charm. Now I'm just playing for a uh, uh, four cost, uh, three star four cost. But the reason I was rolling so aggressively was I wanted to upgrade this. I, I'm still Rakan paired, so I want to upgrade Rakan. I basically just want my whole board upgraded. I don't care about going nine. There's not much that will make me stronger on level nine. Just upgrade everybody to two stars. Now I also found a duplicator, so now now the tides have changed. Now we're actually now we're actually online to try and hit a uh, a legendary or sorry uh, a three star four cost. Uh, but this is basically it. Uh, I'm strong as shit. This guy sure as hell won't beat me. Uh, it's just the learning to spell Syndra player that's a problem. Learning to spell Syndra very very strong. Uh, Syndra's already strong, and then you have learning to spell on top of it. Uh, we're one off of Nasus now. So we're just gonna roll, we're gonna roll, uh, and we hit it. Uh, GG. It's that easy. And remember what I was talking about with two tanky usually play with a reroll? I hit a three star Nasus, and then it gives me a copy of a two star Nasus, because that's what the augment does. Isn't that fucking hilarious? That is so funny to me. Like, not only do I get the three star, it literally gives me another two star. Like, hey, here you go party favors and uh just in time to fight the syndra player now i have a lot of hp so the chances are i was gonna hit the three star anyways uh this guy probably wasn't able to deny me no matter what uh it's crazy that i hit so many karmas because the syndra player is also playing karma uh but yeah check out my nasus ready uh it's not like the other nasus video uh that's why i was waiting to post this one because i already posted the other one so i don't want to make another nasus thumbnail and everybody won't look at my nasus but uh yeah bang GG. Uh, there was a good chance I could beat this guy anyways, but probably not with learning to spell Syndra. So we just convert uh, what I was rolling for, which was a guaranteed second. We hit the charm, which was a duplicator, and boom. Uh, it's a first. GG. Uh, but that, that was the fun tech. It's, it's fun. It won't be that uh, replicable or replicable. You won't be able to replicate it very easily because this is a combination that won't exist come Wednesday. But until Wednesday, you can try it out if you see it. Um... Right, I picked all the units that I thought of that can scale off HP. Recon scales HP, Nasus scales HP. Fiora is probably the best melee unit that's a 4 cost, in my opinion. I think she's just better than Gwen. So I built really good Fiora, and that's what I was playing towards for the front. And then Karma with the healing at the back line. Sounds like a good idea, right? If you heal percentage HP with double Karmas, uh, makes my front line that much beefier. Uh, two tanky, 4 cost rerolls, uh, hit Nasus 3. Uh, easy win. Thank you. Hopefully this one was a fun one. Uh, hopefully it was enjoyable. And thank you for everybody who's been liking and supporting my content as of recently. Uh, I'm working on making some better guides. Uh, start of the next patch because I'm assuming that uh, once the Syndra is gone, there'll be a, a better... Uh, I think more people will be willing to try out the set and really like try and grind out the set and learn a bunch of stuff from it. So I'm going to try and make like more like, you know, tier lists and or guides that try and focus on... Um, the set mechanics and what to do in certain spots and stuff like that that can help you guys on your on your grind sessions as you try and get um, try and get your LP. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. Thank you everybody for supporting and have a great day. See you next time.